Indie Beacon Radio with hostess Denise Bryson. Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. Welcome everyone to our radio show where we encourage everyone, everything in read. I have the pleasure this evening to be interviewing Michael Newman, the author of Between These Walls. Hi, Michael. How are you this evening? Good, Denise. Thank you. And how about yourself? And thank you for the opportunity. Oh, you are welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and participating in the interview. So tell us a little bit about your uh, personal and professional background. Personally, I was born in Budapest, Hungary, just after the Second World War. We came to Canada in 1957 after escaping uh, from Hungary during the Hungarian Revolution. Uh, since that time, I've professionally been involved in a few different uh, businesses, including cable television and real estate, retiring finally in 2009. And ever since then, I've been working as a, on a board of directors of several different public companies. And then two years ago, I started to write my first novel. Wow. So tell us a little bit about uh, what, what inspired you to start writing. I was writing uh, newsletters for a friend of mine, a business associate that was a newsletter publishing business. And I was writing a monthly newsletter for him. And that got me into the writing bug. And then uh, I decided that it was time for me to write something that I was really interested in, which is the Second World War. So I, uh, on a trip to Berlin in 2015, my wife and I, I came upon the idea of writing between these walls. And what is the significance of the book? A book title. Could you give us a little bit about that? Certainly. Uh, the book title is from a quote in the book by one of the uh, characters who's writing a diary in which he writes, when peace comes, we'll finally be able to get out from between these walls. Because he was a little boy and he was in hiding in the attic of a Berlin apartment during the Second World War. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's, that's something. Okay. I mean, because, you know, the only thing, you know, I know about the Holocaust through reading and I know about it because I went to the Holocaust Museum, but I don't know all of the ends. I mean, like you have experienced because you had, your, both of your parents were survivors. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. My father was actually in a concentration camp uh, in 1944-45 where he was liberated from by General Patton's Third Army. At the end of the war. Oh wow! So, so your idea for the novel was brought about because of your experience or the experience of your parents. It was the experience of my father during the war that bought me was one of the reasons was one of the impetus for me writing this book. The other one was uh, on a trip to Berlin. Uh, my wife and I were walking along a street. And we saw these little brass plaques embedded in the pavement in front of some apartment buildings. And they signified uh, people of the Jewish faith that were taken away from those apartment buildings and sent to concentration camps, such as Auschwitz, Treblinka, Dachau. Wow, that's amazing. So what, what is the, uh, how did you develop the plot? I developed the plot by taking and using my imagination to see what it would be like for someone that was living in one of these uh, buildings to be taken away and who actually was now currently living in those buildings and how did they come about to become a tenant in that building? Who, who owned it before? Who took it over? Under what circumstances did they take it over? And who was occupying that apartment now? Okay. And so how much of this book is personal experience for you? 
there is a couple of chapters that are a personal experience. In 2006, during the Second Lebanon War, I, unbeknownst to my family, uh, went to the war zone on the Israeli-Lebanon border and uh, to observe the war firsthand. I went to the front lines. I was under fire for a couple of days, so I experienced it personally. And I had one of the uh, main protagonists, one of the characters in the book, do a similar thing. In 1948, when the State of Israel was born, I had him undertake the same trip surreptitiously that I did in 2006. Oh my, so it's a, so quite, a, quite an experience. So, so quite a bit of the book is, is really personal, personally written from your experience then. That, that's right. And my trip, my surreptitious trip to Israel in 2006 was written about by two of Canada's main daily newspapers. Oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. So what, uh, what else would you, what, now what would you like for your readers to uh, take away from this, from, the, from reading the book? What, what are some of the main things that you would like for them to take away? Well, first of all, I'd like them to remember that famous maxim that those who ignore history are bound to repeat it. That's a very, very important and come down through the years uh, maxim, as well as to recognize the fact that not everybody is bad, not everybody is good, that there is good and bad on both sides of a, a situation, that people tend to have some good characteristics, even if underneath it they're bad. And some good people do have some bad characteristics as well. So I'd like people to recognize that not all is good and not all is bad, and that there are some redeeming qualities in people. Okay. And of course, you know, with the rise in anti-Semitism, all over the world today, I'd like people to recognize of what anti-Semitism in the 1930s led to the Second World War, and I don't want to see any of that repeated. Exactly. So it's a timely book. It's really written for a timely season that we're in in this country and really all over the world. Absolutely. Oh, We've got to keep We've got to keep our eyes open. Yes, exactly. And so, uh, with 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 that being said, uh, anything from your family history that is written within the book? I mean, I know you talked about your experience that you went and experienced, but what about of your family? Is uh, is in what chapters may cover some some of your family history? There, there, there is a chapter in the book that talks about. Uh, the main, uh, one of the main characters, one of the protagonists actually, uh, I'm sorry, one of the antagonists spending time in Mauthausen concentration camp. And there's a story about a man in there that is representative of my father and what he experienced uh, in the camp during the war that is in the book in one of the chapters. Now, you know, when, when you, when your parent, I mean, when your father, when he tells stories, I mean, does he have, I mean, does his, I mean, how does it affect him, I guess, with, you know, it, just all that went on during that time, a very trying time? It certainly brings back some bad memories, but he also wanted to share these with me and with the family so that we could all be aware of what was going on and so we could talk about it and make sure that it's prevented from ever happening again. Yes, yes, because it was, it went, you know, just from when I visited the museum in, in Washington, D.C., and going through there, I was just, I had so many uh, emotional mo moments uh, going through that museum uh, and listening to things. But we're going we're gonna to stop right here, and we're going to take a break, and we're going to listen to our, listen to some things from our wonderful sponsors. We'll be right back. I'm Rox Berkey. And I'm Charles Brakefield. We're award-winning co-authors, Brakefield and Berkey, of the Enigma book series. There are 10 books in these series, with book number 11 planned for release in January 2020. 
Each story has a central technology focus ranging from identity theft to cryptocurrency and now AI wars. These adult techno thrillers pit cyber good guys against cyber thugs across the dark net. In our world, technology is today's weapon of choice. You can enjoy ebook format, paper, or audible. We want your feedback. Until the next story, thank you. Thanks. Well, hello there, my friends. My name is Randy James, independent voiceover producer in the Dallas, Texas area, available to write and record a 30-second commercial, much like the one you're hearing right now. It's a great way to help increase awareness and exposure to your book title. It's easy to do. Simply call me, and we'll brainstorm on a few ideas, and in a few hours, I'll whip something up and send you a digital file ready to use. Remember, call or text me, Randy James, at 214-762-1900. Four, two. Welcome to IndieLector.store, an online bookstore where the discriminating reader can find award-winning books. IndieLector.store is not a big corporation, so it can give up to 80% of the sales directly to the author. Help us support them by buying a great book at IndieLector.store. Hello, I am the author and poet Denise Bryson. I am the author of The Things That Cross My Mind, Love's Reality, both in book and audio form. I am also noted as one of the best poets of 2011. I have two new projects coming up. One is the Blinky series, where Blinky tells us all about our coins and our bills for our children. I also have a book coming out called Say Ye. It's quotes from Denise Bryson. Just inspirational and that will help you along the way. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. It's been received by viewers. Now, when I read the reviews that that I saw, they it's been received very well. But what have been some what has been some of the feedback that you have gotten from people uh, as a review of, of reviewing the book? I've gotten some great feedback. When we had our virtual book launch, also the courtesy of Zoom, uh, we actually had 115 people attend a Zoom book launch, which because of the pandemic, we had to do online. It was originally planned to be at a restaurant with all the various accoutrements that come with that. But unfortunately with uh, the uh, social distancing, we had to put it online, but it was very well received, and the reviews have been excellent. Quite a few people that had been Holocaust survivors themselves have provided feedback as to how accurately the Holocaust is described in this book, as well as people have, there have, <coughs> excuse me, there have been some typographical errors that have been pointed out. And uh, of course, the book has been edited, but sometimes even the at best editors miss some of these typos, but we're having to live with it. Not, there's nothing serious in there because the reviews have been superb, excellent. All of the reviews that we've had have been positive. I haven't had any re negative reviews so far. So it's been very, very, uh, very, very well felt. It was, it was emotionally very well felt by me that these uh, reviews have all been positive. That's good because they've been all a 4.4 and 5.5 reviews. So you've been getting awesome reviews as a result of people reading the book and just the historical background of it. And 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 probably how touching it is to people, especially people that are Holocaust survivors or that, that they are uh, children of Holocaust survivors, children and grandchildren. So just probably uh, you've been getting really amazing views uh, about, about it. So that is, that's awesome. And people love these types of books. I think it's so timely for this time that we're in to read things like this because it gives uh, us a balanced perspective of how um, it is for everyone in this country. You know what I'm saying? Everybody matters in this country. And so it's so, it's so wonderful to really see books like this come out in this time, in this, in this time. So, Thank you, Denise. Um, now, when you, 
how much research did you have to do uh, to bring to, to bring the book to fruition? Quite a bit. I went through a lot of books about the Holocaust, about the Second World War, and of course, I also used Google and Wikipedia as well to follow up on some of the things that I had read in the books, but mainly it was books that I own, that I have in my personal library about the Second World War that I got most of the research done from, and of course, my personal trips. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. That's good, because I was just wondering that. And then what journey did it take you on as a result of you reading those books, uh, being uh, having family members that were survivors of the Holocaust, and even the journeys that you took and the experiences that you've had uh, going through, like you said, on the front line and things like that? What was the journey that it took you? What, what did you feel like you got out of that, that, that research, out of those experiences, and the journey that it took you on? I felt very much like I knew the people in the book, the characters that I had created. It's as if I was there with them. I felt very much a part of the story, as if I was living the story with them. It was very ingratiating that I could create characters that were real, that I could sympathize and empathize with, that I could feel to be a part of. Now, when you were writing the book, did the characters begin to speak about their experience? You know, I have right. I have. I see her authors say that all the time. So I just wonder, was that was is that your experience or? Yes, very much so. It seemed as if some of the characters were writing the story themselves as we were going on, mm. as we were proceeding with the novel. Yeah, because I, I hear people say that all the time. So it's like you just got the pen in hand or the, the typing and they're telling the whole story. They're telling their story. And Very so that, much that, so. Yeah, that seems to happen happen a lot. And so it's, it's always, I always like to hear about that or what, you know, what, what, what it, what, what path it took you on uh, to get to the, to the end of, to the, get to the finished product. I guess is what we'll say, or to get to the end of it. Now, do you think that, you know, this would be something that you could make a movie trailer out of and present it to, um, you know, in, in that fashion? Do you think that, I think, you know, I think I, some of these, some, some books ought to come to the movie status so we can see them on the big screen. <laughs> I think funny, this would be funny, with that. funny that you should ask because I'm talking to various screenwriters and I've talked to a Hollywood producer in, trying to bring this in either as a feature production or as a series such mm -hmm. as a Netflix or uh, home box office HBO series. And I'm certainly embarking on that route uh, to bring it to the screen. Awesome, that's amazing. That would be so great if that happened because I think it's something that, you know, we could really benefit from seeing it in that way as well. And also by reading it, first of all, please read. And then just by being able to see it come to life, I guess. A lot of people have said that this would make a great movie. So I took them at their word and have started to explore that path. Awesome. Awesome. So what... Um, now, what brings you to, is this your genre of writing that you will continue in as you continue to uh, produce and write, or as you continue to write more books? Will you stay in this type of historical genre? Yes, historical fiction is a genre that I feel comfortable in, having read a lot of it and having done a lot of research, and I feel very comfortable in writing it. And I've already started to work on a sequel. Oh, wow. So you're already working on your next project. Yes, I am. That's amazing. And have you, have you ever published anything else prior to this book? I did quite a few years ago for the business associate of myself that I wrote uh, the uh, newsletters for. I uh, had a book published, a business book published. Uh, it was titled getting rich, doing what you love. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that would be amazing. Because so many times people, I know my mom used to say, she said, if you do what you're passionate about, the money will come. That's what she would always say. You, you That's so true it. as well. Yes. That's so true. 
so your mom so your mom was obviously a very smart person she was <laughs> she was yeah now how does your uh how does your family feel about your your writing and 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 getting into that how do they feel about that they feel they are very very encouraging they helped with a lot of the social networking stuff because I'm certainly no computer guru. So I had to be led by the nose into social media and they have been very, very supportive in that. Okay. That's good. That's good. And it pays to have those, that younger generation there so they can help you navigate through all the social media stuff because they do it so quickly. They just do it really That's quickly in there. <laughs> Absolutely. I just wish that they would accept phone calls instead of always uh, encouraging me to text. I know. You call them, they text you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That is how that goes. That is how that goes. Well, we're going to take another break, and we were going to hear some more from our wonderful sponsors, and so we will be right back. Thank you for watching or listening to Indie Beacon Radio. Our sponsor, IndieLector.Store, is the only bookstore that pays authors their fair share for book sales. Help authors to succeed and enjoy a great book by supporting them at IndieLector.Store. Enjoy a 10% discount with coupon code SHOPPER20 at IndieLector.Store. Coupon valid until December 31st, 2020. That's IndieLector.Store, coupon code SHOPPER20. What started as a love letter to her son has become an international love letter for all parents to their children. Now you can read acclaimed author Shanna Lee Charbonneau's story to your children. When her son was very sick, she calmed him by singing her own song to him. She turned that song into the book, My Mama Loves Me, I'm Her Little Boy. She wrote three more magical books for all parents and kids six and under. Available at Indie Lector, Amazon, and all local and national outlets. Authors Marketing Guild is a membership-owned organization designed to help authors succeed and learn how to better market and sell themselves and their books. Join us at AuthorsMarketingGuild.com and receive so many benefits you'll wonder why you didn't join sooner. That's AuthorsMarketingGuild.com. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. Well, welcome back to our show. We have been here and we've had the privilege to interview Michael Newman, the author of Between These Walls. And I'm telling you, it is an awesome book. It is very. It has a lot of historical value and a lot of meaning to it. So you want to be, uh, you want to pick it up and you want to read it and learn some things. I'm learning something during this interview talking to him. So I'm so glad I've had the opportunity and I had the privilege to talk to you, Michael. So Michael, what's next for you? Well, uh, I started uh, working on a sequel, so I'm doing a lot of research in order to start uh, writing the book. I'm into a couple of chapters. And of course, uh, looking to uh, talk to some screenwriters about bringing the book to the screen and adaptation, either as a feature film or as a series a la Netflix or HBO, because I've been encouraged by comments from some of the readers that this would make a fantastic movie. And I do believe that it was written in a cinematic style. Oh, that's good. We can't wait to see it. So, okay, but but please go read it first. So then, when you see it, you can you, it can really give you that full effect <laughs> if you read it first. Now, do you have any more upcoming events coming up? Any more virtual bo uh, uh, book launchings or anything? Do you have anything else like that coming up? I'm waiting for a book life review, and I've entered uh, two different uh, book award contests that I'm hoping to. Uh, obviously, I'm hoping to win, uh, but uh, there's no, those, those are the events that I've got upcoming. Yeah, so it was good to hear about your, your launch of your book, and, and you, had, you of course, with the coronavirus and things like that, you had to do a virtual uh, launch, but as you said, it came out very successful, so that was amazing. So Zoom and these virtual things are really, uh, they're changing the way we do things. <laughs> Oh, very definitely, very definitely. 
And I really, at the end of the day, don't mind it because yes. I think that you get to reach a lot of people that you may not otherwise reach if you try to do it on a face-to-face -face basis. Exactly. I think, I, think, I, I think so, too. So your, your audience becomes wider and, uh, and right. further. Yeah, because you you, you're almost global. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're global. So, As a matter but, of fact, uh, we had some people from Europe on the uh, book launch, on the Zoom yeah. launch. Yeah, so this is causing, causing uh, authors to be able to go global. So that's amazing. So they reach more people and more people are become familiar with their work and their book. So now where can we find you at on social media? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Michael Novelist. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, it's at Michael Newman Novelist. Uh, my website is www.michaelnewmannovelist.com. And oh, of wow. course, you, you can find uh, the book on Amazon, on Goodreads, on Barnes & Noble. Okay. Well, it, is, it has been such a pleasure talking to you, Michael. And I'm so glad that I was chosen for the opportunity to do so because I learned a lot during this interview. And it has been my pleasure. And so make sure you go out and support Michael Newman and, and, and buy his book, Between These Walls. And so it is, a, it is an amazing book about a historical historical time in our lives of World War II and about the Holocaust and things like that. So please make sure you go out and buy it and, and support our Texas authors and our indie authors. We want you to support them and uh, whenever you can and follow him on social media. He is out there and look forward to his book be coming to the big screen. <laughs> coming to the big thank, screen. Thank so you so much. Thank you so much, Denise. And thank you very much for your time and the opportunity to do this interview. You very are much appreciated. I, I, I thank you so much and I appreciate talking to you. So thank you for listening to everybody out there. Thank you for listening and please drop everything and read. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website. Indie Beacon Radio with hostess Denise Bryson. Indie Beacon Radio is produced by B. Allen Bourgeois Fathers, Mark and Guild LLC, copyright 2020. Voiceover by Randy James, Lydia Bello, and B. Allen Bourgeois. To be a sponsor of the show or for more information, please email us at info at authorsmarketingguild.com. To be interviewed for the show, please complete the form at radio.authorsmarketingguild.com. Music always rejoiced by Ram Cord of...